Hello, hello everybody. Uh, today I wanted to show you or I wanted to give you a little bit of a preview of what is coming in the next couple of days in a no codex. So you heard me right. The next couple of days, not weeks, not months, we are releasing this really, really soon. Um, and uh, some of you might have heard me talking about new AI assistants coming up. Um, and this is one of those AI assistants. The next AI assistant will be launching in uh, really shortly after this one. Uh, but we want to start with uh, the launch for this AI assistant. So uh, the AI assistant that we are going to release in the next couple of days is the one that will probably lift, lift the, most, the, the most complexity of your shoulders. It's the AI assistant that will help you generate logic based on natural language. So let me just uh, go ahead and show you guys. I have prepared uh, several um, uh, examples. Uh, so let's dive in and let's start. So the first example is I have um, this person entry form right here. It contains a few fields and it contains a button. So it has first name, name, birth date and a save button. And if I show you the data format, I have a data format person which I generated using another AI agent that we have. It contains name, first name and birth date as fields. So uh, this button right here has an action attached to it and let's now drill down into that action and this action is completely empty so let me just uh, fetch uh, the, the the prompts that i have have prepared for this um, so this is the ai assistant here you can view uh, the credits that you have left in your account you have your welcoming message uh, and this this assistant states what it can and what it cannot do at the moment in time. You can use a voice uh, control to enter your prompt. I prefer it by doing it uh, by hand. So let's go on ahead and enter my prompt right here. So change this action by fetching all the values of the form on the page. Combine this in an object and write this object to the database, voila, under the data format person. And that's my prompt. Let's hit, let's hit send and let's see what the assistant does. Voila, let's see. And now I have a little bit bit of logic that's created for me, get the value of an input field, get another value of an input field, which is the first name, and then get the birth date. We create an object right here, and then we create some data. And let's uh, try this out really uh, quickly. So if I hit this button right here, we get our page. We go and fill in some uh, values like this and then we hit save and let's uh, go back like this and let's see if the data has arrived and as you can see right here this data has been entered as I entered it in the form so this logic is absolutely completely operational so uh, the second example that I've got for you guys is um, let's call an API. So let's just create a new uh, action right here. Call API, create an action like this. And let us, um, let us open up the assistant and let's then say change this action by calling the API that is being called in the following curl statement. And let's let me just copy paste my curl statement right here. Voila. And then write the the results to the application log. So let's wait until the um, AI is done. Uh, 
voila. Let's hit the create, the change button. And then as you can see here, I have an API call, content type application JSON. It calls the endpoint. It has some parameters and it has the method get and the response type is of course JSON. And then the response format is filled in, but that's okay. And then API call result response. And then it writes the response to the application log. And let's quickly test this out if this works. Let's create a new test for this uh, piece of logic. And as you can see, I have some products in my, um, in my log file, uh, which is actually the result of the application, the API call. So another example that I wanted to show you is uh, this one. I have here a calculation page which contain, uh, contains uh, some input fields um, and it uh, also contains a button. Uh, like this and then it contains a result title and an image and on the button uh, we have an uh, action linked to our on click trigger so let me just open up this action as you can see this action is completely empty now if we open up the ai assistant right here let's give it a prompt to work on so change this action by fetching fetching uh, the values a and b add a and b together and make sure the result is written on screen by replacing the placeholder result on the result title component. If the result is bigger than 10, show this image. So let me just grab the image uh, real quickly that I want us to see. And uh, in the other case, hide the image image element. So let's see what the AI does with this. So let's wait until it's finished. So now it's done. So let's execute the change. So as we can see, it gets the value of a number field. It gets another value. It adds two numbers. It replaces a placeholder on the title component. And then it does a branch where it checks the sum result. It sets an image. It shows an element if that image has been set. And it hides an element on the uh, in the other case, so let's see if that works. So we'll add five and six, which gives us 11 and shows the image because that is uh, bigger than 10. So, and then let's add four and four, which will then hide the, uh, the image component. So this perfectly works. So let's head back to no codex. Yeah, so the next uh, example that I wanted to show you guys is uh, how we can generate logic for APIs using uh, this uh, assistant. So I have here an API, which I called Joe API, and it has an action attached to it, uh, which is called fetch Joe's. So if I now click on edit this action, I have an empty action right here. Change this action by fetching all the person uh, data records, records from the database where the first name is Joe. Write this result to the API response like this. And we'll have the 
assistant do its work. So the assistant is done. Let's hit the change button. So as you can see, it fetches a list of data records from the data uh, um, format person. It fetches, uh, it checks if the e, the first name equals to Joe and then whatever it found, it sets it on the, uh, the response. So let's check if that is correct. So as you can see right here, I have Joe Brown being returned with its body and all the metadata. Now, most of the time you want only the body data of your database in your API response. So let's have this AI agent change this action a little bit. So let's change this action by mapping the result from, from, from the database to bodies just before writing it as an API response. So let's see what the uh, AI assistant does with this prompt. Now it's done. Let's have, let's see, uh, let's look at the results. So it still fetches uh, a list of records. So this all looks okay to me. Then it mops it to, uh, to bodies and then it actually uh, writes out the mopped array as, uh, as a result. So we can like look at it right here. So that's fine. Uh, the only thing is that I don't want a mopped array. So maybe let us, uh, I want it to be called differently. So the nice thing about no codex is when you generate something, you are in control and then you can change it. Uh, and we can like change the field name to Joe's, for example. And if I now again load the API, then I will have this as an array, which is called Joe's like this. So uh, there is another thing that I want to show you is the data table. So um, this also, of course, works. So I have this person overview uh, template right here and all it actually has is a data table uh, sitting there without any data or without any columns defined for it. But the template has an on action or, or on load action attached to it, which is called populate person data table. And if I open up this uh, action, Right here, it was filled with my previous run, but if I open it up, it's completely empty now. So let's give the AI assistant again a little bit of work. So let's change this, change, change this action by fetching all the persons from the database, map that list of data to a list of uh, data with only uh, the following attributes, uh, first name, name, and add this list, list of the lists to the data table on screen. Let's see if that works. So we'll have the AI assistant do its, its job. Voila. So it fetches a list of data records and it adds the list of data records to uh, the data table and it passed in along uh, that it only wants to have the first name and the name, the, the first name and the name attribute. So let's see if that worked. So if we load up this page right here, then we have a data table with only name and first name of all the, um, the persons in our database. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you're just like me 
uh, that, you, that you can't wait to try this AI assistant out in production in all of your applications that you want to build with NoCodex. Uh, please let me know in the comments below uh, what you think of it. Please also let me know what you want to see next. Uh, if there is, is any other AI assistant that you uh, would want to see, if there is uh, any things that you want to try out with, uh, with this AI assistant in the near future, let us know. Uh, remember, we'll be launching this, releasing this in the next couple of days. We just have to tweak some, some little tweaks, uh, some little bugs. We have to fix some bugs and we have to tweak some UI uh, uh, stuff, but then it's all yours and you can go ahead and create your dreams with this AI assistant. So yeah, talk to you later, guys. Bye.